Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back for Tuts Plus, and uh, this time I'm doing a pretty specific quick tip uh, on a technology called Automap by Novation. This is becoming more and more popular um, as they're releasing more and more different controllers uh, that feature Automap. And Automap has been going for quite a while, so I think we're at version uh, 4.7 now. Uh, so if, you, if you've got Automap or you're thinking about using it, this will probably be helpful to you. I know quite a lot of my students use it and they don't really quite understand how to set it up. Um, now I'm not going to show you the exact setup and installation, I'm going to show you how to customize an auto map um, uh, plugin routing if you like or plugin mapping. Essentially what this involves is opening up uh, the the auto map server which is a, a sort of a, a neat piece of software that comes with auto map um, and here it is and you can see here that we've got the SL Mark II and uh, it's connected to logic. It's actually connected to Logic 10, but it, for some reason it's saying 32-bit. But what you need to do is you need to go to your audio units and choose the plugins that you want to use with Automap. So you can see I've got uh, sort of very specific ones. Generally, filters and synthesizers I tend to use, ones that you're going to tweak, or EQs maybe. Um, I, I'm generally not going to put a complicated, um, you know, compressor in there. I, I'm, you know, generally I'm I'm tweaking sort of synths and filters. Um, so you can see the Korg Poly 6 is in there, or, or the Native Instruments um, Driver, which is a filter, or Native Instruments Massive, which is a synth that I use a lot. Um, I've actually not really finished choosing which plugins um, I'm using, but whatever you're ticking here is then automatically um, mapped into, well, included in your DAW door, um, and it's going to be ready. So when you go into the, so for instance, if we look at the Korg Poly 6, down here you can see there's Poly 6 and Poly 6 Auto Map. You just choose that one and you're good to go. Now you can't see my controller uh, and because this is a quick tip, I'm not doing a huge amount of video production, but um, you can trust me that there is basically a, a representation of all the controls on it. Now, the thing to do here is to start to customize the map and this is really what I wanna show you. So you would need to hit view on your controller and you can start to see um, the controls that are currently mapped to the controls on the hardware and this is something that sometimes when you first load it up you know the names are all a bit wacky and it's all just randomly mapped out so you're going to have sometimes you have buttons on knobs and stuff like this so it's it, all the controls will be there but it just maps them out in order it doesn't really uh, sort of do them in an intelligent way that's really something you've got to do yourself but once you've done it and I'll show you how to lock this you, every time you load the synth up it's going to be sorted so the first thing you need to do is learn the controls. And this is a very simple mechanism. You just hit, you can just hit learn, put it onto on, or you can put learn on on your hardware, hit the learn button, move a control, and then move the control on your hardware. And you can see I've already mapped a few, that was already mapped to that one, but I'm moving this on the hardware now, and you can see it moving right here. Let me just move the cursor across with my other hand. Some contortionist tricks going on here. And uh, you can see it moving, okay? And then once that's mapped, you can call this whatever you want. So I generally tend to um, simplify them so they fit nicely onto the display, okay? Like VCF res, I've, I, see I've, you could just call that res. And then if you get used to calling these the, sort of the same thing every time, then generally uh, you'll load up a synth and you'll know where everything is. And I, I actually tend to go even as far as putting things on the same knobs every time. So you can see, I've gone ahead and put um, filter envelope. I call it fil filt env, and then filt attack. So you could go f attack, and then decay, sustain, release. You get the idea. So I've I've generally got my filter uh, cut off and resonance filter envelope, and then the filter envelope controls, or in this case, all the envelope controls on the same row. Now, what this allows me to do is quickly programming filter based sounds and you can see how you can quickly adjust sounds if you've got all these controls in the right place almost as if you've got the synth in front of you um, now another useful tip here is that you can drag and drop so if we've got a volume control here and you wanted to swap it for some reason with the say the
Now another useful tip here is that you can drag and drop. So say you've got this volume here and we've got this on the last knob and you can see the, the moving on both the, the synth and the uh, the control interface. Um, if I wanted to move it to this fader, I could just drag it and drop it. You, know, you saw that, but it swapped the art mode with the volume and now I've got the volume on this fader here, okay? And that's like really easy to do. We can just move it back and you can do that with any amount of controls. And again, you can name that if you want. So once you've finished doing this uh, and you've got enough um, controls, and if you want to add a page, by the way, you can just add another page of controls uh, and then move up a page uh, like this. And you can have as many pages as you want. You can just scroll through those on the hardware. Um, the trick here is, the final trick is to make sure that this loads up every time you load this instrument. And you, all you have to do is hit set as default, okay? And you don't really see anything happen. And this is where my students fall down a bit. They, they map something for a project. They're all happy with it. They load it up and the default controls come back up and they have to do it all over again. And I think they have to do this for every project. You don't. Just hit set as default or, and then you can save it as you, if you want, you know, and call it poly six. And it's often a good idea to save these in a cloud or in a Dropbox. So you've got them. Um, you can just, you know, put them anywhere you want. Um, and then at least you've got a point if you lose this setup, you can load that up. And uh, if you've done a lot of work mapping it out, then it, you don't have to do it again. So that's how you do it. You, that's how you set up auto map um, for a specific synthesizer. And this will work with your DAW's stock synths as well in many cases. Um, and just make sure you hit that set as default at the end. And then you can load it up anytime you want. Hopefully this has been helpful to you if you've got auto map. Um, or if you're thinking about getting it uh, to give you an idea of what it's capable of. Okay, I'll be back with some more quick tips and tutorials soon.